Hello and welcome back to the third video of this IDSC course where we are trying to understand what data science is to its core and today in this video we look at where does data come from and what is data sampling. It's very important to be aware of where is the data being generated and collected at. We also look into some varieties of databases. So without any further delay, let's begin. Uh, first up, I'm really sorry to all the stats enthusiasts. This might be too familiar and boring to them, but just a general recap on what's primary and secondary data. Primary data is raw, the original data that is directly collected from the official sources in the form of surveys and questionnaires, while secondary data is data that has already been collected by someone else and we are only using it for further treatment or inferences that's about it where you know regarding these two things so here is a little little you know segregation of data sources um, within primary data sources we have door to door surveys like census student thesis like a, maybe a paper published on different efficiencies of engines uh, personal interviews are another example uh, within secondary data sources uh, everything around us is included basically since covid 19 you know the world got locked up people started using digital media you know even more uh, the data available thanks to that can be categorized you know, under secondary data sources Internet, web pages, books, newspaper, all are example of secondary data sources. To store all the data that's being generated in, you know, plethora and multitude, we have databases. We'll be comparing, you know, three, four databases and their quality. So we have relational databases. A relational database includes tables containing rows and columns. For example, a typical business order um, you know, the entry database for it would include a table that describes a customer's, let's say, um, name, address, phone number, and so forth. These will all be in columns. They stick to a specific schema or blueprint. Uh, the next one is transactional databases. So, transactional databases are optimized for running production systems. You know, everything from websites to banks to retail stores. These databases excel at, you know, reading and writing individual rows of data very quickly while maintaining data in integrity. They are organized according to timestamps. They have another unique feature, which is we can undo operations within, within such databases. Moving on, we have multimedia databases. Multimedia databases is the collection of interrelated multimedia data that includes text, graphics, images, animations, video, audio, etc. And a vast amount of multi-source multimedia data. It's sorted in object-oriented databases with it, you know, containing complex information. The last one is spatial database. So spatial databases are built to store and provide powerful query capabilities for spatial data. So spatial data is often much large in size and traditional than, you know, traditional data because of its, you know, additional lo locational component. So this locational component that I'm talking about is generally in the form of polygons or coordinate points like, you know, Google Maps and global positioning of things or even, you know, satellite tracking uses spatial databases. We move on to data sampling. So Data sampling is a statistical analyst techni analyzing technique where the process involves selecting, manipulating and analyzing a representative subset of data points to identify patterns and trends and make inferences on a larger data set. So we have a very recent example. When the COVID-19 vaccines were being made, the vaccine trials were held by sampling out different individuals from the society. So for example, different races, genders, you know, ages or people with different health complexities were taken into consideration. So the vaccine was deployed on these people for trials and the results or the efficacy seen on these people, these people was assumed for this whole population. You know, we can't go and 
sample it for each and every you know peculiar individual cases so we take a general representative of the whole population and based on that based on the results on them we make an inference for the whole population now there are two basic types of sampling so one is probability sampling and the other one is non probability sampling so probability sampling refers to the selection of a sample from a population when this selection is based on a principle of randomization so you know there is random selection of you know or chance and within probability sampling it is more complex more time consuming and usually more costly and you know than non probability sampling like for example choosing people randomly based on equal probability from a city like for example i just choose one person blindly so that is because there's a equal chance of anyone getting uh, you know selected that will be called as probability sampling there is obviously some biasness which comes into picture but we are ignoring the standard error and you know all those things for now those complexities um uh, non probability sampling is a method of selecting units from a population using a subjective method which is non random obviously so since non probability sampling does not require a complete survey frame it is fast easy and inexpensive way of obtaining data there is a caveat to it but you need experts for accurate subjective judgment now for example for the covid vaccine example i gave now you can't call anyone to you know pick people you need doctors who will you know say that okay these there might be these complexities maybe a heart patient for example so you know i'll need someone who has had uh, a history with heart disease and then i'll test and sample based on that you know set data set so both of these sampling techniques are used on a day day to day basis so there's nothing as you know one is better or uh, the other one is you know worse off so yeah uh this was it for the video please do watch my next video which will be about big data and you know how it's changing the world it's all around us uh thanks for tuning in and i hope you enjoyed and gained insights from this video if you did if you did you know please don't forget to like and subscribe and also leave your valuable feedback in the comment section thank you